This is our back lot, downtown Sacramento off of Broadway. We all arrived this morning to this. Thunder, rain, wind blowing. I shot this video, I could barely open the back door of the newsroom because the wind was pushing me in. And, and many, many, many people are dealing with this who have no power. But it was really, really severe at 3.15 this morning. Uh, yeah, we heard it coming down on the roof really loud. Nearly 19,000 SMUD customers still dealing with outages. Keep in mind, last night this was at 28,000. More than 100 SMUD teams are working to repair damaged power lines. I saw five or six utility trucks on my way in this morning. Arden and Carmichael and Land Park and Florin are some of the hardest hit areas. All right, take a look at this. The PG&E outage map showing many areas still in the dark. They are working to turn the power back on for people impacted by the New Year's weekend storm. Yes, some people still don't have power. These back-to-back -back storms making it very difficult for not only residents, but crews. So with this, we are constantly watching for school closures this morning. At least five campuses will be closed in the Sacramento Unified School District because they still don't have power. You can see those on your screen. The rest of the district is open. Elk Grove Unified has several schools that are also closed. They are listed on your screen. In the meantime, all of Stockton Unified School District schools remain closed this morning. They're all closed yesterday. Just into our newsroom, Turner Academy will be closed. However, all other schools will be open in the Lodi Unified School District. Once again, ABC 10 has team coverage monitoring this awful deadly weather. ABC 10's Bridget Biorlo and Mark S. Allen are live out in the elements to show us the damage that's happening as we speak. First, let's go to ABC 10 meteorologist Rob Carlmark and Jordan Tolbert, who are dealing with what we're seeing right now. Rob, one thing we didn't mention, Tahoe Truckee Unified out on a snow day today. Yeah, and it's snowing very, very hard right now. And let me just tell you something. You know, yesterday was extremely busy. Uh, and this morning, you probably were woken up by the weather. Either it woke you up because it was raining hard or you heard thunder, saw lightning, or your phone buzzed with an emergency alert because we had not one but two tornado warnings from the Weather Service early this morning. That's why I'm backing up the radar to show you how this all came together. This is 3 o'clock in the morning. This is roughly when Walt shot that video that we showed you. As this line started to move out of the coastal range and really pick up steam right in the middle of the valley. Then as this line of thunderstorms matured and we had a full-blown huge line of very strong thunderstorms, two of which had some rotation indicated on radar. We will have to wait and see if there was an actual tornado spawned uh, within some of these cells and I'll show you where those were a little bit later on. But in any case, huge areas of downed trees, power lines down and outages like we showed you because of the strong line of wind that moved through with these thunderstorms. Gusts up to 55 miles an hour or stronger. Now it's been absorbed into higher elevations, producing very heavy snow and lowering snow levels. This is where we are with radar at the moment. We've got some light rain about to move in through Sacramento. Dry and quiet right now in Stockton. Modesto dry and quiet right now. This does help with the early morning commute, but the roads are still wet because of what moved through in the middle of the night. Very heavy snow, whiteout conditions, just treacherous travel not advised whatsoever over the next several hours at least. And we are again starting to see a bit of a break. But let me tell you something, folks. If it's not raining now, that does not mean that that's the forecast for the rest of today. Because this low is sitting right off the coast, producing more waves of moisture pushing through, you can even see some bolts of lightning off the coast, which means more rain on and off through much of the day and even more thunderstorms later on today. So that's the forecast for the rest of today. We even have more rain coming in tomorrow with a break finally by Thursday. Now, Jordan, yesterday was one of the all-time bad travel days on the roads. It was just one of those situations. How does today look? You know, today, actually, yesterday and today are two of the days where I've seen the most in terms of on our website. You know, we see things that law enforcement post in terms of road hazards, uh, crashes, things like that. Yesterday and today are some of the most road hazards and crashes that I've seen since I started here, actually, six months ago. So this morning, there are quite a few things to talk about today. Very busy weather morning, which means a very busy traffic morning as well. Wind is one of the big things we're watching today at the I-5 bypass. This is where we're going to see some really windy conditions. So this is dangerous for high profile vehicles, cars in general that can get moved around by the wind. So just be very careful. Leave a lot of room if you're driving near a semi truck today. 
uh, Yolo Causeway, also another place where we're seeing really windy conditions. And this is why we're seeing a big rig blocking southbound five at Yolo Bypass. It overturned over there, and that's where we find ABC 10's Mark S. Allen. That's where he's live along I-5 at the Yolo Bypass. That's between Woodland and Sacramento. So, Mark, I can hear the wind already. What are you seeing out there right now? Yeah, I'm telling you, just as you talk about the wind, it picked up significantly. I could see how easily a high-profile vehicle like a big rig could be knocked over, and indeed, that's what happened. Just north of the airport, I-5 South. Uh, if you'll take a look, we are on I-5 South now. Uh, Caltrans has the freeway closed at this point. It's probably another quarter mile until the incident. And then if you turn around here, it's exactly what you don't want to be a part of. It's just car after car after car blocked up for miles. So if you're getting into Sacramento, coming I-5 South, you're going to have tremendous difficulty. Uh, try to find an alternate route. Try to go south and 80 into town. Back to you. Alrighty, thank you, Marcus Allen. Stay safe out there. And in terms of alternate routes, like he was saying, what you can do is go from the Woodland area down 113, and then you're going to take eastbound 80 if you're headed towards Sacramento this morning. So that's another one of those alternate routes that you can utilize today. And another thing, besides wind, we're dealing with flooded roads and also ponding on roadways. Northbound and southbound 99 at Dillard Road, those on and off ramps have been closed really since New Year's, continuing to see closures as crews work to reopen that area, but the impending rain rain and windy conditions are just continuing to cause delays and issues out there. So now we're going to bring things over to our Bridget Biorlo. This morning, she's in Wilton talking about evacuation orders happening there. Good morning, Bridget. Good morning, Jordan. Thousands remain evacuated in Wilton due to the flood dangers, and I'm standing in several inches of flood waters, as you can see here on Grant Line Road, and there's even debris in the road. It stretches all across the lanes here, and this is actually a better forecast than what we've been seeing in days past, where this whole road was flooded due to several rounds of rain. Now, this is, I should add, a closed road. Some are not adhering to the orders. This is an evacuated zone. Over 5,000 people live in Wilton. Everyone was told to leave because things can change at a moment's notice. We did see a lot of rain this morning that's only adding to this and more is on the way. I want to show you also some of the damage caused by the wind. This area is seeing wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour throughout the week and this past weekend. And this is the result. As you can see, downed power lines getting onto homes, cars. We saw a lot of toppled trees through this area. So homeowners have a big cleanup operation underway, cleaning all that debris scattered across neighborhoods. But a lot of them aren't even here to be able to tend to it. And a lot of them are listening to the orders. They're getting out, but they say they are frustrated. They say it's a tale of whiplash on New Year's Eve. They were told to evacuate because of that strong storm. Then the evacuation evacuation was lifted only to return. They once again were told to leave because those powerful storms rolled in once again. Take a listen to some residents we spoke to. Nights ago, uh, when the wind was picking up, we could see the poles starting to really move. Um, and then we were actually looking out the window and it snapped in, in half. And, you know, you could see it hit the eucalyptus trees and uh, blow up. It really is quite the scene to show you what's happening here. Earlier in the newscast, we showed you that power line that was almost falling over because of how strong the winds are. Now, the only bright spot, Walt and Bria, is that the Gassumnus River, which was a problem spot, a point of concern last week when it reached the second highest level ever since we started recording it. That has since gone down a water level wise. It's now cresting three feet below what we saw last week, Walt Bria. Yeah, one thing about mandatory evacuations is you really don't have to go. It's just that nobody's going to go in and get you mm -hmm. when it gets really serious. So you're sort of on your own. So, okay, that's Bridget B. Orlo, who is in the Wilton area. Bridget, thank you. So this morning, evacuation orders have been lifted in Vacaville. Leisure Town Road is back open. Residents on that uh, road made more than 40 calls for help with the flooding and the down trees. We want to thank you for all of the images that you've sent in over the past few days. Take a look at this unbelievable flooding on I-80 in Sacramento. This is at the Winters exit near Del Paso Heights. 
Lynette Meeks shared this with us just yesterday. Be sure to download that ABC 10 app. You can use it to send us your videos. You can also track conditions where you live, whether your power is on or off. And we're hoping that all of your devices have been charged and you can still uh, log on uh, with us and get all the information that you need.